helping, which is going to be everybody, is non-traditional stress-free ad sales. As we all know, that uh, ad sales is the number one, uh, just I don't want a problem, but number one challenge that we all have. And that's why we, we linked up with Janae and uh, are bringing her to you because uh, we, we understand how important that is. And Janae is, is basically the best in the business. So we're excited to bring her to you. And uh, Janae, I'll let you take it from here. And at the end, I'm going to go ahead and, and come back in. I'm just going to be asking for everybody to give us feedback. Uh, but please, please, everybody, do uh, go ahead and participate as much as possible, and we'll get the most out of this. All right, Janae, take it from here, and uh, we're all uh, excited to hear you. Thanks, Dave, everybody. I wish I could hear a resounding hello back, but I'll do without that. Today I'm going to talk about non-traditional stress-free selling. And to some of you, you may be wondering, what does that mean? Traditional selling is when you pick up the phone and you speak to someone or you visit them in your face-to-face or you're sending letters or emails. That's traditional sales. And there obviously are important strategies and tactics, and we're going to talk about a lot of those in the upcoming months. Today I'm going to focus on other tactics that help make sales. And for those of you who hang on to the end of this webinar, you're going to see the results that the recommendations we're going to go through today actually have had for different publishers. Um, so before I get into the session, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself so you know who, who I am. I have been in magazine publishing and, or, and Internet publishing for 30 years, since 1980. Um, I have worked with business-to-business -business and consumer magazines uh, small ones and very large ones. I've worked with the sixth largest magazine, and I've worked with magazines that are startups that have just one person working with them. Um, my goal is to help you increase your sales and um, to, do, to do it stress-free and easily. When I first started selling, I developed an ulcer. It was just so frustrating to figure out how to do it in a way that was successful and I was making myself sick. So um, by listening to some of the ideas I share with you, you get to avoid that part, and I'm happy to help you get there. So let's go and start right into non-traditional stress for sales tactics. I call them pearls. I call them pearls because they're gems. And what it, we're going to talk about, how you identify these gems, they have either low or no cost or price associated with them. These are tactics that we'll talk about that reach everyone. And you see existing customers up here that popped up just so quickly. And I say existing customers because, as the first one, because we forget when we are marketing to include our existing customers. We're so excited to get new business, we forget to take care of the existing business we have. And um, a lot of salespeople make the mistake um, because they don't have time, of not communicating with their existing customers in between the sale and the renewal. And then when the renewal comes around, the customers are thinking, I remember why I even made this decision. A lot of advertising is not coupon-based. A lot of advertising cannot be tracked directly. So when the renewal comes, existing customers say, oh, I'm not interested anymore. So I highly recommend that your marketing tactics, your non-traditional sales tactics, include existing customers. And we'll get into more detail as we go on. Your past customers. I'm sure everybody on the line, unless you've got a brand new publication and you haven't had this experience yet, but everyone on the line has had somebody cancel and then come back and advertise with you again later. So one of the ways you can expedite that and make that more likely that it will happen is make sure that your non-traditional sales tactics include past customers. Obviously, prospects, the people that you want to do business with, will be included. Political referrers, I love this group, also often um, missed or skipped. Political referrers would be people in um, associations or chambers or other organizations who have connections to the people that you want to do business with. This group is often ignored when you're doing your marketing or your non-traditional stress-free selling. Now, by the way, I've used the word marketing several times, and I don't want the people who are on the line who are excluded salespeople to think, oh, this session isn't for me because this session is exactly for you. 
all of the tactics that I'm going to be sharing with you are tactics that I used as a salesperson and tactics I use now as a consultant to the industry to help, to help salespeople. So you as a salesperson will be using most of these tactics that we go on. I call them marketing because that's really, marketing is your non-traditional selling. Because when we think selling, we think the face-to-face and voice-to-voice. We also make sure we reach advocates. So advocates are people who may not be associated with your business um, but know a lot of people and think very, very highly of you. So you may want to include some people who look like this strangler, stranglers, <laughs> stragglers on your um, marketing list in a database because they may know people who would be ideal prospects for you. And non-competitive organizations. Um, a chamber may be a non-competitive organization. I know I put them under political refers, but any other organizations that don't have their own publications or websites that they're selling advertising on that are in your industry, you want to communicate with them as well. So we're going to look at pearls, which are tactics that have low or no price that reach everyone agreeably, obviously. We want people to feel good about us. And good is one of the um, things that we will help develop. I'll talk more about that moment momentarily. We want to reach them repeatedly, just like your advertisers um, want to do a one-time ad or will run two times. They'll dip their toe in the water. If they do not run enough frequency, they will not get results. The same thing for you. If your non-traditional sales tactics are not done repeatedly and often enough, you're not going to get results either. Your goals and your, uh, your results will lower attrition, which means lower loss, and you will increase sales. So this is what we're going to be talking about. Again, marketing and non-traditional sales tactics to a waterfall. On the bottom of this waterfall is a basin and water. And in the basin, you put the water, and the mother pumps the water all the way up to the top to get a waterfall. If you don't put enough water in your basin, the water will not fall. And same with your non-traditional selling tactics and your marketing. If you do not do enough of it, you're going to say, oh, this isn't working. So you need to do the same thing that your advertisers and prospects need to do is identify the right market. So they identify the right readers, which in principle is they can reach your magazine, and you identify the right advertising prospect, and you both market enough to those people so you get results. The first way that we're going to talk about using pearls will create goodwill, and I have several ways of creating goodwill. Here's the thing. You want people to think about you and think favorably of you when they think about you. If the only time they hear from you or see you is when they get a bill or you call them for a renewal, build goodwill is going to be non-existent. And I'm sure a lot of you agree that people do business with people they like. So building goodwill is critical and a way to make sure that advertisers stay with you month after month, issue after issue, and more importantly, year after year. So holidays. This is a holiday that a lot of people don't even think about as relates to their business, Mother's Day. It is a holiday that's very important to every woman who is a mother. It's a day she gets to feel recognized. At the very least, for you know, the week preceding Mother's Day, when you call someone, email someone, or speak to someone, at the very least, you can say, I hope you have a great Mother's Day. If you want to do a little more, you can even send them a card, an e-card or a physical card. It's a touch, and that's one of the keys to successful non-traditional stress-free selling is frequent touching. Here's the thing. Surely nobody on this line, if anybody at all, has the time to contact every single client and prospect as often as you like, which means 
you need some tactics that you can use that where you do one thing and it reaches a whole bunch of people. So you can, for example, sit down for an hour and address, you know, 50 Mother's Day cards to all of your female prospects, with, you know, mother prospects um, and customers. Or you could want you set up um, a list and send an e-card to them and you have a touch. Because remember, you want to touch your prospects frequently. Now before I click the next one, I'm going to make another suggestion. I'm going to be giving you a ton of ideas. Ultimately, you could, include, you could incorporate all of them. But if you try to think that you're going to do all of them at once, you're going to feel overwhelmed. So start with one, then add another, and then slowly but surely just keep adding another one until you have a critical mass of touches with your, your advertisers and your prospects. Halloween is one of my favorite goodwill opportunities. Um, one Halloween, I actually went out dressed up is pebbles. You know, pebbles and stuff from the Flintstones. Now, of course, guys, I'm probably thinking I could never do anything like that, though there are some of you who can. And I, you know, do what feels comfortable to you. I remember one customer I was sitting across, I was working in local market sales, so I was doing a lot of face to face. So on Halloween, I went out to all my appointments, and he just had this big grin on his face. Now, if you know, you know I'm a very serious person. I like to have fun. Obviously, I wouldn't do something like dressing up like pebbles if I didn't. But I'm very serious and I'm very focused. So while he had this huge grin on his face, we were talking about renewing his schedule, which of course he did. And he stayed with me for years. And as a matter of fact, for many years, he was never even with any of the other advertiser, any of the other publications. So um, have fun with these things. For Halloween, you could do other things. So one, some Halloweens, I went out and I bought I bought um, mini gourds. I just attached my business card to it and gave like these little pumpkins. I'd walk in the week before Halloween and I'd give a little pumpkin to my advertisers, and some of them would draw faces on them. You could bring a little. You could get a little Halloween um, trick or treat bag or basket and fill it with some candy. Make sure your name or your card are on things because you want them to remember where it's from without being a blatant message. But have fun with Halloween and creating goodwill. Take advantage of the holidays. That's the message here. Take advantage of the holidays to create goodwill. People are thinking about them anyway, so join in the thought and join in a way of having yourself be thought of it, that puts a smile on people's faces. Thanksgiving is um, a, a major opportunity that very few businesses take advantage of. What I like to do instead of sending Christmas cards is send Thanksgiving Day cards. Your Christmas cards, if you send them, get lost amidst the tens of other Christmas cards that, that are sent. When and if you send a Thanksgiving Day card instead, yours is probably going to be the only one there, which is going to give you an advantage because it's going to be more meaningful. Plus, Thanksgiving. You can take this opportunity to thank them. It's Thanksgiving in addition to wishing you and your family, you know, the, the sweetest of days. Um, we want to and we want to thank you for um, letting us help you grow your business as well. Christmas is a really fun holiday that offers a lot of opportunities. Some people I know have baked cookies and brought them with them. You can bake them. You can buy them. I have one sales team that actually went out and sang Christmas carols, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, you could, of course, send e-cards. I'm very big on e-cards. A lot of, for some that are free and some that might cost $20 a year, it's a negligible expense. Um, you can put in as many email addresses as you want, as clients and prospects you have. And then when um, Thanksgiving Day comes, you just send, send the Thanksgiving Day card to all of these people. So you might have a one-hour setup, and then you have a two-minute execution. You could send Christmas cards electronically. You could send St. Patty's Day cards and single mail. I mean, really anything that just puts a smile on people's face, 
lets them know that you're thinking about them without asking them for money, without wanting something from them. This is me. Um, and it's a, a guy used to get dressed up, a good Jewish girl from Queens. I used to get dressed up on Christmas Eve day. And I'd rent a van, and I'd wear that costume, and I filled my van with poinsettias, about 100 of them, and I had a route. And I drove from one end of my route to the other end of my route, and I delivered poinsettias to all of my clients and prospects. And, yes, it was Christmas Eve day, so a lot, some people weren't there, but when they got back, they got, the, they got it. I also wore this costume, by the way, to all of the Christmas parties that were happening um, in the market. So this is really a good idea if you've got local market sales. Um, some of these are going to be good for your business and some won't be appropriate. So take the ones that are and work with them. What I can promise you is I put a smile on people's faces. And when they thought about me and thought about my magazine and my website, they, had, they felt really good about their connection with me because I made them feel good. Birthdays is another goodwill opportunity and one that people miss. I recommend at the end of each new sales call or at the end of your next visit with your existing customer, simply ask them what the month and day of their birth is. And um, sometimes they'll say, what do you want to know that? And say very simply, I'd like to send you a birthday. Say card. Oh, really? Um, I don't think I've ever had anyone say no to me. It's again very simple. It's being there where your competitors are not, and being there when you are putting a smile on their faces, so that they are happy to hear from you when the time when you when you do want to call them for renewals, etc. Also, to ask if you know when their anniversaries are. Now, of course, there's a caution with this because 50% of people will get divorced. But if you know that your client, your prospects or your clients are married and celebrating an anniversary, you could send an anniversary card or you can send anniversary of doing business with you cards um, on the third anniversary, fourth anniversary, you know, and you can send an additional anniversary card with a, you know, with a customized message inside. More opportunities, meeting and events. If you have a client, an advertiser who's opening a new business, um, I had a restaurant that was opening a new location or a hotelier that was opening a new business, um, I would send them flowers uh, to the opening. Again, it's very unlikely that any of the other media, any of the other media that they advertise is doing this. So it may stand out, made me look like I cared, but here's the thing, I care. And as whatever you do comes from your heart, and then it's going to work. You want to make sure that there's nothing they can see through to, um, to find out that this is only a ploy. So these aren't ploys. They're just good ideas to be able to implement when they resonate with you. I recommend um, goodie bags are fun. Sometimes you'll go to events. Um, that have goodie bags, or sometimes you're asked, this is how I came up with this idea. This is, I was so excited with it. Um, I think it was a member that called me, I don't know, an association called me and asked me if I would give a donation um, for goodie bags that they were doing for an event. So I said, I'll do you one better. I'll call my customers, and I'll get items from them. So I called like my full year, full page advertisers and said, hey, got this great opportunity. If you want to give me X number of coupons or samples or whatever it is, um, I'll get them distributed to all of these people. So they were thrilled. Here I am doing something for them. The organization was thrilled because I'm doing something for them. So my advocates and my political referrers are happy with me. Guess where they're going to send people when they need some help. And my customers are seeing that I'm helping promote them without asking them for any money. So if you have this opportunity, this is a great way for you to reach, um, to, 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 to create goodwill. Whoops. Okay, through the two then. Uh, share events your customers attend. Um, some people just get overly involved in being member of a lot of different organizations. I would rather see you be 
a member of only one, then two, three, four, or five organizations and take the leadership position. Choose the, one, choose the event that your customers attend, um, and that will help them see you in a light that, that they appreciate and communicate with them, again, where you're not asking them for anything um, and create an opportunity for you to actually get some face time with them and do business with them. Um, donate a product. A uh, product would be magazine space or, um, you know, imprints on the web or your easings or whatever you have. I'm okay with giving advertising with restrictions. When donated advertising, there was a the restriction like not valid for existing advertisers except as an upgrade. And as a result of that, um, like there were auction fundraiser auctions or things like that I may have donated it to. Um, as a result of that, I've had a number of advertisers over the decades buy the upgrade and then the next year or the next issue um, pay for the upgrade because they realized they really wanted the larger size. Uh, and on the other hand, I've had new customers come in because they can get a deal the first time, but I'm not cutting my rates. I'm a major opponent of rate cutting. And um, any of you who are having weight challenges, like, well, we'll talk about that in subsequent sessions, um, has to with that discounting. But here's a way for you to support an organization and get a new advertiser where they feel they're getting a chance to try and dip their toe in. Um, and once they see how well it works and how much they like it, then they, they'll stay with you. And that's worked pretty well for me as also. Okay, so. Where the last portion of goodwill are going to be miscellaneous. I love parties. And you can have a party once a year for your customers. Again, it depends on where your customers are. Some, there are a lot of great ideas for local market stuff. There are some parties for international trade magazines at an annual event. And even with that, I was able to trade out. In that instance, I was working for an airline food service magazine. So we had one of the caterers um, that we actually traded out with. In a local market, you can trade out with a restaurant. I'm a fan of trade out only when we would be using cash. If it wouldn't be cash, then you're not going to buy it. Don't trade it. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to cut your image in anybody's eyes. You don't want to cut your profitability. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. But if you are going to trade. Definitely invite your customers. You may want to invite your top prospects, and definitely invite political advocates who can help refer you, refer others to you. Serve great food. You're going to have a party, and you're going to have crappy food. People are not going to have a good time. People talk about the food. I've had people talk about food at my parties for years after the parties. People say, "Janae throws the best parties." And it's because of the food. I'm also, uh, I also like to have another activity. So I've done a party that was at a comedy club. I've done a party that was at a um, country western nightclub. I've done a party with psychic greetings. I've done a party with caricature artists. And trade as much of this stuff as you can. Actually, um, photos of attendees. We did a party at um, in Orlando with... Um, Oh, it was a speedway. You got to ride in a race car. I can't believe I don't remember the name of it. Where well, you got to ride in a race car um, more than 100 miles an hour around the track. And then at the end of that, with everybody in their suits, we took a picture of them with their driver and gave it to them afterwards. And you have little frames made up, again, so they can remember you in a fond way, um, which is the whole point of goodwill. You could conceivably give awards to advertisers at this party. You could have an award for the, the, the longest advertiser, the you know, most successful, most creative, whatever fun ideas you may come up with. You can also do a party without awards at all. You know, sometimes when you're talking to people and you tell them that you're going to be taking a vacation soon, um, while you're on vacation, you could the first pick up a postcard and mail it to them. Hey, just thought you'd like to see a picture, you know, 
just what you'd like to see. This is where this is where I am today. I hope you're having a great day too. Um, it's again a touch. They already know I'm on vacation. It's, it makes you more personal to them. People do business with people, and people do business with people they like. Again, use the ideas that work for you. This is my favorite. Um, again, perfect for a local market if you're driving around meeting people. Um, once in a while, you'll have some customers that have dogs or cats in their place of business. So carry a little bag with dog treats or cat treats. Um, if people bring their dogs or cats to their business, you know they love their dogs or cats. So if you do something like help give them a little treat or a little toy, you're going to be special in their eyes. Ah, get a few more miscellaneous for goodwill. If you see any interesting articles, clip them out, fax them to them, email them to them, mail them to them, hand them to them. Um, again, you're showing that you care about them. So um, I actually remember one client, one advertiser who um, had Kate and found another location by chance that I thought might be interesting for him. So I clipped it, gave it to him. It turned out not to be right. But what did he think about me? He thought I was fabulous for, you know, going this extra mile, even thinking about him. And it was not, were you, were you ever going to get in with me? If you have the ability to do this, this is another great tactic. Long before I was doing this for a living, um, I was doing sessions for the companies that I worked for or associations. So I was um, in a membership position with the restaurant association, and they wanted a way of giving back. So I did a seminar for them on how to create ads that sell. And um, I was not promoting myself. And that's a key thing if you're going to give free seminars. If you are capable of giving a seminar yourself on anything that will help your customers or an association, then make sure you don't promote yourself. What happens is you are now the expert. I remember one advertiser, or not an yeah, I didn't think he was an advertiser at the time, come to me at the end and say, why didn't you tell me that I should be making these changes to my ad? And the reason was he wasn't ready to hear it from me at that point because I was just an advertising salesperson. So this is a way to move yourself from being just an advertising salesperson to being uh, uh, somebody meaningful in their lives. That a prospect or an advertiser is not feeling well, and hopefully nothing serious, but you could send them a card or flowers or virtual flowers, virtualflowers.com, or you could send them a can of Campbell's chicken soup. Um, and, you know, a nice little card. You stand out. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it lets them know that you're wishing them well. Okay, the next group of um, pearls or non-traditional sales tactics we'll talk about are those that are going to help you decrease attrition or decrease loss. What a shame! We spent all of this time selling, and only to find, you know, only to have people not renew. So we want to decrease that possibility. So all the goodwill things we just talked about are going to help you decrease attrition. So the goodwill falls into two categories. You get a double whammy with them. To Jay Conrad Levinson, the father of guerrilla marketing. Nearly 70% of lost business is due to apathy after the sale. Love them and leave them attitude is fatal. And while Jake Red Levinson did not specialize in the publishing business, um, I know and you know that a lot of the time after the sale is made, you don't communicate with your advertiser unless you have to for renewal or you need an ad, design, you need an ad from them. Um, or whatever else you need from them. So if you don't need something from them, there's no communication. And this results, as I've referenced earlier, in loss of business. Goodwill tactics are great, and here are some others. When you do any kind of mailings, if you do any kind of mailings, whether they're electronic or snail, include the customers, not just your prospects. Um, 
reason that I say this is because you don't want them to forget why they've chosen to do business with you. So even though they're already doing business with you, it's a great reminder. Furthermore, some people may think, you know what, maybe I should do something bigger for this next issue because it's special if it is. Um, and again, you know, your marketing pieces also have to focus on them rather than you. That's another whole session. But if you're doing mailings, include your customers. It's really, really big. And I just don't care how much it costs. Um, it's highly, I don't even recommend, it's like it's a rule with me. <laughs> every single customer and every single prospect, but every customer gets a pop, you know, subscription to the magazine. Everyone in the chain. Here's the thing. When the magazines are sent out, sometimes um, if an advertising agency is involved, then the client may never even see it. So they don't even know what they're buying. Um, and sometimes there are other decision makers involved that when it comes time to make a new decision, when renewal time comes up, they don't really know who you are. So you want to find out everybody in the chain that you can that's applicable and give a subscription to them or just make sure that they get a copy of your magazine every issue. This is possible and it depends on the market that you're in. But um, there are some local markets and some trade markets where there are association magazines where you could have press releases about yourself. So if you've gotten um, if you is on a board of directors for an association, that's occasion for a press release. Um, if you've won kind of an award, that's occasion for a press release. Uh, over the years I have had so many press releases um, done about me that when I was actually in the field selling, that people used to say, oh, what, wasn't your picture in the newspaper recently? And it could have been months or even years ago. Uh, after a while, you build up this critical mass. People are just so used to seeing you. It adds to your credibility and your prestige, which all go to making sales easier. Issue comes out, and this is a real big sticking point with a lot of the businesses. After the issue, the first issue and advertisers in comes out, you need to communicate with them. And a lot of people are scared. Oh, I don't want to. What if they didn't get any response and they're going to cancel? Here's the thing: if they cancel, they're going to cancel. And if they initiate the cancellation, you know. It's almost impossible to get them back on the phone again to even try to have a conversation with them to keep them as a customer. So if there are problems, problems that are unresolved, problems that are unaddressed do not go away. Unaddressed problems grow and get bigger. So if there is a problem, you want to catch it, boom, immediately. So they feel that they're being taken care of, and more likely than not, there's not a problem. Here's another thing. If this was done properly in the first place, there won't be a problem. If they really wanted to advertise with you, there won't be a problem. There will only be appreciation when you make that first call. Um, you'll know if the sale is done right in the first place based on this simple criteria. Are you selling one-time ads or are you selling schedules? If you're one-time ads, unless you're annual, it's because your advertiser does not truly believe that they should be investing in you. It may very well mean you've bugged me enough, you've come here so many times, I'm going to give you something. And I'll bet dollars to donuts that for those of you who are making one-time sales, when you go back, you hear something like, you know, we've already spent our money for the year, we don't have any more money left. You get some kind of an excuse from them that just blows you away again so they don't have to deal with this because they've done it. And now they can say to you, I tried it, it didn't work. Hopefully you don't make sales like that in the first place. And in our upcoming sales sessions, we'll talk about how to make sure the sales are done in a way that that doesn't happen. But if you have a good sale, you want to make sure that you check in because the last thing you want to do is lose the business you've worked so hard to get. Specialty items, I highly recommend this. Use them. There are so many people that have specialty items that are in their closets. 
um, somewhere. So if you have them, use them and come up with a fun way of using them. So for example, a lot of places have mugs. So if you have mugs and you're giving them out at a trade show or anything like that, um, you can just ask them, have you mugged today? Or I want to mug you. Um, so make up something fun that plays off of what it is, um, but definitely use them because otherwise they won't do you any good. To decrease attrition, you also want to do business with your customers whenever possible. Um, and if they're not there when you're doing business with them, you want to let them know you were there by leaving a calling card. So, um, I've had cards made up that have my business name on it and my name. It's not this card. I'm not trying to do business with them. I just want them to know that I was there. So if I'm in a, in a customer's business and they're not there, I'll just leave a card. Do me a favor and tell John that you, you know that your name was here. I just want him to know that I had a fabulous experience, in, you know, in his store, whatever place that I'm in. Whoops, sorry, there you go. Um, send helpful tips. Um, I remember when I had just turned 40, and uh, my my nearsighted vision, my far where I wasn't seeing well close up. Right, I was getting farsighted, needing reading glasses. And I wasn't used to carrying them around with me. And I suddenly started discovering that a lot of my friends were having the same problem too. We'd go into restaurants and we couldn't find reading glasses anywhere. So what I did was I ended up contacting all my restaurant customers and saying, I had a great idea for you. Why don't you go down to the local you know, Walgreens or um, drugstore and buy a couple of readers. Your customers are going to love you. If you have ideas that you either figure out yourself or you find out from somewhere else, share them. You can send a note, you can send them an email, you can make a call, leave a message. Again, you're communicating with them in a way where you're giving them something, not asking them for something, and showing them that you really care that their business improves also. This is one idea that costs just a little bit of money, not a lot. So far, almost everything I've suggested costs virtually nothing. Um, I would recommend, yeah, um, this is good for attrition, it's also good for prospecting. Um, if you can't get in, and I don't know if I have this duplicated, so if I do, we'll skip over it. But if you can't get in to see someone, um, or you want to just touch a good customer, send them an email in the morning or a fax in the morning or place a call and say, by the way, um, I'm going to be sending over five people pizzas to your place to tell everybody that lunch is on me. Or you can do it the day before, say tomorrow I'm going to do this to tell everyone, you know, to plan on having lunch in the office, it's on me. You know, enjoy. Just wanted to let you know how much we appreciate your business. Not something that most people do, so you stand out. It doesn't cost very much money. And talk about goodwill. Not only does your customer love you for this now, but um, he or she is getting accolades from his or her staff. So you're making him or her look good inside of his company also. Um, if an article about one of your advertisers or prospects, you can frame it and send it to them. It's amazing how many times something like that will happen and they won't even frame it. Um, and even if they will, it still shows that you care and that you're thinking about them without asking them for money cool tactic to help decrease attrition. And it has the same fear factor associated with it as um, calling your advertisers after the first issue, after their first ad comes out. Every day you have time to make one additional phone call. So if every day you call one customer just to say, I'm calling to check in, see how you're doing, see if I can help you with anything. If you think they might need a change to their ad, you know, are there any small changes you'd like to make? And it doesn't have to be. Or you could say, um, I saw this article that I thought was interesting. I just wanted to share an idea with you if you have one. But even if it's just to say I'm calling to just check in with you, most of the time you'll leave a message. And that's okay because they're getting a message from you, a touch, a connection where you are not asking them for anything, and that's the critical part. Okay, here are some more getting in 
tactics, and this is a real fun one. Um, how many messages in a bottle do you think are on any given desk at the moment? None. My recommendation, if you're having a lot of trouble getting in, is do something fun. You could get a bottle, put a piece of paper in it, make sure it's easy to get that paper out of the bottle. Um, and you know, make a quick list statement on there and make sure that it's a benefit statement. We will spend some time talking about that over the next couple of months also. Easy ways of creating benefit statements. So instead of saying, you know, our next issue is closing, you know, here's the deadline, right? You want to have a message in there as um, you know, finally a way to talk to you about helping you increase your business. Let's let's look at it in more detail. Please call me at this number. Uh, whatever the message is, my message and my benefit statement in that instance was bringing you more business. So choose the benefit statement that you think is the most applicable to them. And um, the chances are when you do something really funky, and I'm going to show you results of things in a minute, um, when you do something funky, you are going to um, – it's really cool. By the way, I just remembered, if you have any questions, um, definitely just type, type it in the Q&A because I'll answer them as we go along. So, okay, next getting in tactic, which is also a lot of fun. You could go to, you know, the little, I don't know, Walmart and pick up a pair of toddler sneakers and put a little note in it that says, I'm running out of ideas as to how to meet with you to, to talk about how we can help you increase your sales. Again, it's going to get them to smile, and it's going to make you stand out. Here's a secret. Aspects are being indifferent. You need to be different. So if you keep doing things the way everyone else is doing, and you're not succeeding, when you have success, you don't need to pull one of these funny stunts. But if you're not succeeding, it's probably because you're doing things the way everyone else is doing them, and they're ignoring you. So if they're ignoring you, you have to break that indifference and be different. Fun one. And I'll tell you how well this has worked. This is from a book by Hal Becker, who was a number one salesman for Xerox, not any small feat. He came up with this facts idea. And by the way, you've heard me mention facts a couple of times Yes, I realize we're in the 21st century, but faxes are still used. And the beauty about faxes is, is if your customers do have a separate fax machine, they don't get much on it anymore. So you're going to stand out. Whereas, you know, stuff that comes in an email box doesn't stand out as easily. So faxes are very effective. You can do this with an email. You can do this snail mail. You can do this any way you want. Basically says, you know, check a box telling me why you can't call me back. I'm busy and I'm still interested. I think you're a jerk and I wish you'd go away. And you know that um, people are starting to smile. Not returning your call is a power play. If you beg enough, I'll call you back. So, you know, all the choices in here are the way this is done, tongue in cheek. It's a lot of fun. And, and I have heard from a number of salespeople when I have presented this idea to them. They've done this, and they have all said to me, I can't believe it. I got a call back. And it will work for the other ideas I've shared with you as well. That's, this is the thing. They are being indifferent, and you are being different. Forgetting sales tactics. Go to events, and you see people you recognize. A secret. Recognize you too. <laughs> it's really easy for you to walk up to someone, even if you know who they are, and you've been wanting to meet them. It's so easy to say, you know, we keep seeing, well, we've got to stop meeting this way. Or we keep seeing each other. I think it's about time. Don't you think it's about time we actually met? Hi, my name is. So, um, it's a really easy strategy and a really easy way to do it. More tactics. This is a fun one. Um, a million years ago, I published a little tourist magazine. It was called See Daytona Beach. And you know what the tourist magazines are in the hotel. When it was Daytona Beach, there was an event um, twice a year, actually, that was Bike Week. And we had an issue that focused on bikers. 
And it was really hard for the biker business owners to believe that this little yellow tourist magazine was going to be read by bikers. So what I did was I went out on Main Street where a lot of the bikers congregated, and I took my camera with me, and I stood near one of our magazine stands. And I saw this dude here reading a copy of the magazine. This was not set up. Anyway, I took a whole bunch of the pictures, and this was, like I said, a million years ago, so digital wasn't an option. And I actually just pasted them on a large piece of paper, and I went and I showed all of these biker owners' stores that bikers were reading the magazine. Did it work? Absolutely, and I'll show you at the end of this a piece of how well it worked. So think about what photos you can take to prove the points that you want to prove. Very effective sales tactic. Oh, my gosh, this is really great for attrition. It's really great for attrition as well as renewal. Um, well, same thing. Um, it's a start. I used to send a thank you card to every single advertiser after every single renewal or new sale. And I actually had people call me and thank me for my thank you cards because they're so unaccustomed to getting them. Now, here's a secret with the thank you cards. You don't have to um, create new thank you cards every single time you, um, every time you write them. I had a standard message that I used. Thank you for the opportunity to help you grow your business. And then if I needed to follow up with them, it would be, I'll be back in touch with you in about a week or two weeks, whatever it was, so they knew what the next step was going to be. Um, this is another fun, this is a fun, uh, well, not this one, the next one. <laughs> okay. When you use flyers or media kit pieces and you're in front of clients, I highly recommend that you write on the flyers in front of your clients. What's going to happen, or prospects, what's going to happen when you leave is you're not going to be there. So if you just leave this flyer, they get to choose what it is they're going to look at. You don't want it to happen. You want to point them in a direction. So what I would do, let's see if I can do this. Here we go. So what I would do if I were in front of them is I might have a big red marker. Whoops, okay. And so I would just make an arrow, right? Or I might um, have a highlighter, and okay, well, or a highlighter. I'd highlight that. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you leave, they can remember whatever it is that you want them to remember, and they'll do that if you make notes where you want them to focus. Or you could, you know, in a special message, you could, I would do this in hand, obviously, but right, um, might be um, start by, you know, this date, right, and get, let's say, except I would, and get. And, you know, so I write a little note on there also. So whatever it is you're going to put on there, but make sure that when they look at the flyers again, they know what they're looking at. This is the fun one. Learn to write upside down. And no, I'm not joking. <laughs> um, what... I started doing this because I was making sales and I'd be sitting across the desk from somebody and I wanted to make a note. I wanted to write on the flyer, but I didn't want to take it away from them, so I learned how to write upside down. Right now I'm pretty decent at it, but when I started it was really awful. And I would say to them, um, just remember that this, you know, this isn't a three-year-old scroll. I was writing upside down. Here's the thing when you write upside down. You have 100% of their attention. No, they're not used to seeing people write upside down. So just the mere fact that you do it, penmanship does not count in this instance. You want to make sure it's legible. But just that they're seeing you doing, they're watching, they're paying attention to exactly what it is you're focusing on. So if you're drawing an arrow next to a really important point or a star or highlighting it or underlining it, they're focusing on what it is you want. And if you're writing the words like I actually wrote them right side up, 
I use the text tool here, but I would have written that upside down. They're going to be focusing on what you want them to focus on. So it's a fabulous sales tactic. Same badge, and you're at a um, kind of an event that doesn't have them, or you're doing local sales, I recommend you wear it while you're going around, especially if you're doing cold calling, uh, because you're going to tell them your name, and nine times out of ten they're going to forget your name be, you know, within the first minute or two of your conversation. You don't want them to feel embarrassed. So get in the same badge. It's not expensive, and wear it. I'm all a fan of getting testimonials. So if you wait for people to write letters to you, you're going to be waiting forever. So I created this little form and write out, you know, what it, when they hear them say something, I write it out, and then I ask them if they'll, you know, okay me using some of my marketing material. You don't have to have letters. You just have to have their words and their permission. It is in um, a newsletter that I used to do um, by fax, and here's a version of what I'm doing um, right now for my business. This is what I did when I was with a publishing company, and now this, actually when I do these four publishing companies, they look more like this, they're electronic. What it is is a newsletter that gives them ideas. I, my newsletter obviously would be for you. It's free, and if you wanted it, you could go to magazineadvertisingsales.com and sign up for it. Once a month, you'll get a free tip. Um, but what happens is this. People will read the newsletter because you're giving them ideas as to how to help them with their sales. At the very bottom, you can talk about you. And by the time they get there, they're willing to read about you because you've already helped them. What I'm telling you is my clients who are using this format that, um, that I'm creating for them are finding it much easier to get in, and they're making more sales. I mean, so it's it's a fabulous tactic that's free and expensive and very effective. What you send the magazine to um, a prospect and put little post-it notes where their competitors' ads are to say thank you. You can send a thank you card. You can put a little um, ticket in there. Say thanks a million for prospecting. Um, tactics. Um, this has worked really well for me, and actually, one of my clients told me that she's doing this. She's asking her prospects to go with her to guest meetings, so she can introduce them around. I remember when I did this, I had one of my prospects say, "My gosh, everybody knows you." Um, so he thought all of me because, I, you know, as I was introducing him. So it costs you next to nothing. Very effective. If you are involved in an association, when I was involved in the Rotary Club, um, one of my responsibilities was to find speakers for a month. So I invited my prospects to speak. Uh, another thing, again, I'm doing things for them and, and not just asking them for money. So I have to make sure, obviously, it benefits everybody, and it did. In this instance, I invited an advertising agency to speak. Um, so he would talk about, you know, you could talk about anything because these are business owners. Um, okay, prospecting. I, it's critical. You see this little pearl? It means it's like really important. Critical that you maintain a good database. And if you have ideas as to what kind of databases, you can call me um, or email me, and I'll give you some information. It depends on what it is you're looking for um, and what do with it, but a lot of the tactics that we've talked about, like the newsletter, the easy things, are, are going to be based on your having the names of the people to communicate with. So you want a good database, a clean one. When you give business cards out, give them two, so they can pass one along. Um, it's possible that an association, a chamber, or whatever has packages they mail out. Sometimes you can include your magazine in it. That's another way to get there first and to get people familiar with you without your having to communicate with them. Get early. Help set up. Help register. Help clean up. Volunteer for anything. Being there will not give you the exposure and the um, ultimately the customers that you need. So you need to be involved in meetings. 
political lawyers and advocates make sure that they get complimentary subscriptions, make sure they get any mailings that you're doing. And this is favorite. The biggest pearl of all is your brain. I mean, it's, this, is, this is just absolutely fabulous. You know, sometimes you have these absolute furnaces. You know, you're taking a shower and all of a sudden you hit yourself on the head and you go, oh, that's what I need to do or that's what I need to say. Well, I'll share with you a secret right now with how that happens. What happens is at one point you said to yourself, I need a solution to. And you said I need a solution to, your brain went to work to find a solution. The secret is this. Your brain is working even if you are not asking it questions. I'm sorry, even if you're not trying to think. Because if our brains didn't work without us trying to think, we would die. We'd stop breathing. So our brains are always working. So if you have a problem or a challenge, just say to yourself, I need a solution to, and leave it alone. And nine times out of ten, miraculously, you're going to find the solution. It's, it's a fabulous tactic. This is your Chopper's World, in Sports, and Daytona Harley-Davidson are three businesses that um, I did, that, that, that advertised with me um, using tactics that I've shared with you now. Shop World ran $250 ads and ended up spending more than $1,000 with me in the time that I was working with them. Gator Beach and Sports was a non-advertiser before they started doing business with me. They were in my 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 funnel, they were in my database, they received my newsletters and all of my other touches. And when they were re-advertised, they chose me. And, be, and, and, and on the time I was with them, they were buying, if I remember correctly, about $1,200 ads. Um, they spent about $50,000 with me by the time that I left the, the company. And on the Harley-Davidson, very cool. I mentioned to you how important I think it is that you be very active in associations. Um, so I was very active in the Advertising Federation. Um, I was president. I chaired committees for like 10 years. And I used to introduce myself at the meetings. We didn't talk about this as a non-traditional selling um, tactic. Um, but how you introduce yourself is one of them. And I used to introduce myself at the meetings when we would go around and everyone would say their name. I said, hi, I'm Janae. Um, would see Tony's number one tourist guide. And it got to where my competitors introduced me as the area's number one tourist guide. And um, when it was time, when Tony Harley-Davidson entered the market and they were ready to advertise, their advertising agency who I had had no with at all. He'd been coming to the ad fed meetings, but I still didn't know him. Um, I mean, I knew him personally, but we had never really spent any time. I I'd never made a presentation to him because his clients had all been outside of um, a prospect area. When he got Harley Davidson as a prospect, he said to me, I need your rates. No, I don't need a presentation. Yes, we know we're advertising with you. And they did a hundred thousand dollars in business with us without my ever having to make a sales call to him. Um, well, I have a couple of questions that have come in, so let me see if I can answer those. And or I hope that you've gotten a ton of ideas out of this to help you really grow your business. Um, they're very effective and very inexpensive. Okay, here's the first question. Um, can I have a copy of the slides? Yes, you can have a copy of the slides if you want them. Just zap me email, Janae, at magazineadvertisingsales.com, and I'll be happy to send them to you. Okay, let's see what the next question I have here. Um, do I you know, how, do I work with other companies? Yeah, and I specialize in the magazine industry, so if you have any sales challenges at all, um, just call me, and I'll be happy to help you out. Um, in the meantime, uh, if you would like to get some free tips, well, I didn't mean to do that. If you'd like to get some free tips, 
Jones, you can just go to magazineadvertisingsales.com and sign up, and we'll give you a monthly free tip easy, and then I'll just be loaded with ideas to help you really short so you don't spend too much time reading them. And if I can help you increase your sales, happy to. Otherwise, in four weeks, I will be back, and we'll be doing another leg of stress-free selling where we'll be talking more about um, more sales techniques. Um, either you're on the phone selling, you're face-to-face -face selling, or you are um, writing letters and sending emails. So thank you very much, and I think David's going to come back and close up this meeting. I um, wish you stress-free sales. Thank you very much, Janae. Great job. That, that was really helpful. And I would like to kind of touch, I, you know, I didn't know exactly what Janae was going to be talking about. I do know she's going to be giving these monthly, so she's going to be digging into certain subjects and different parts of, you know, stress-free and ad sales. So. Um, you know, and, and seeing what she was talking about now, and I was just discussing it with uh, with our publisher here about, you know, uh, about what she was talking about. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And he was saying, is this, you know, is this really helpful? And I was like, absolutely, this is because if I was two years ago and you asked me that, I might have said, you know, I don't know about all that. I just need to sell, 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 sell. Well, we we came to a harsh realization that we really needed to keep our customers. And over the last couple of years, and some of the stuff that Janae's touching on is the same thing that a gentleman by the name of Chet Holmes, which is, um, I don't know if you've ever read his book, uh, The Ultimate Sales Machine, but I would definitely suggest getting it. Uh, he touches on many, many of the same things. And after reading what he's done, over the last couple of years, we put a huge emphasis. And again, I had no idea Janae was going to be talking about this specifically, but we put a huge emphasis on the stuff that she talked about. You know, it's, you know, retention. You know, keeping sales is the same thing as making sales. And you just, you know, you get you get caught up in the everyday grind of things, and you just kind of forget to, that that is so important. And I'm glad that she brought the awareness to you guys about this because I can't emphasize enough how important this these things. I mean, they seem like easy, simple things, but how many of you are doing them? You know, so I, I would definitely suggest you know taking to heart what she said because I can just attest from personal experience that it has greatly, greatly helped our magazine and in our sales and what we've done. Um, so just wanted to touch on that. Uh, and again, uh, we do have this recorded. It'll we'll be sending that out uh, not right away, but uh, in, in a couple weeks once we get all this um, situated. And again, definitely contact Janae directly if you have any, you know, if you want to talk with her in greater detail, get on her mailing list. She obviously knows what she's talking about. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Next uh, Wednesday is our social media. And this guy is uh, that we've teamed up with is, is extremely sharp. Uh, you know, he's on the same level with, with Janae as far as the ad sales. So I, I highly suggest doing that because... As you learn in magazine publishing, it's not about print sales only. It's and, you know it's about sales and online and social media and PR and the whole works. And we're going to be bringing that to you. So uh, look forward to uh, seeing everybody next week. And uh, f please, please, please give us any feedback uh, as we're you know this is going to be an ongoing thing, uh, hopefully forever here. And um, you know we want to get better. So thank you, Janae, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye bye. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.